Hello dear gate aspirants, welcome to Veda Gate Academy. The topic what we are going to discuss is modeling a transmission line or developing an electrical equivalent circuit of a practical transmission line. Total this topic we are going to handle in three modules. If you look at the heading, from the heading itself you got a doubt. Sir, what is the need of developing an electrical equivalent uh, circuit? I want to explain this one with help of an example. Imagine if you want to measure the receiving and voltage of a transmission line. What is the procedure? The first procedure is we purchase old voltmeter, go there, connect it, record it, measure it and record it. Done. This is the first procedure. What is the disadvantage with this procedure? It involves labor, not only labor, economy, we need to purchase voltmeter. Not only that, the one of the biggest difficulty is when our load changes, definitely receiving and voltage will change. We know very well that the load on our practical transmission network keep on changing, keep on changing instantaneously. Means, uh, suppose if you switch off your fan in the room, load changes. If you are going to switch on a fan, load is going to change. Means, receiving and voltage is going to change. Means, uh, with respect to time, instantaneously the load is keep on changing. Therefore, receiving and voltage is also going to change. Means, uh, measuring practically with help of a meter is going to be very difficult and laborious process and it also involves economy instead of that we will develop a model by using rlcg elements the building blocks of our electrical engineering are what ma r l c and g any practical electrical equipment can be modeled with help of these four elements yes or not yes ma now that is what we are going to take up here we will take up a practical transmission network yeah observe here this is the typical practical transmission network for the purpose of simplicity i have taken only two towers number of towers depends on the distance of transmission a practical transmission network is going to have any number of towers that depends on the distance yes all transmission network equipment we already studied in the first session anyhow just we are going to take up a quick revision here about transmission equipment this is called as transmission tower and this is made up of steel galvanized steel in fact why not with iron iron is having the problem of corrosion therefore we are going with the steel yes we know that this tower is placed on earth earth or ground voltage is zero therefore the potential or the voltage on at any point on this uh, transmission tower is going to be zero man. suppose if you want the potential here how much it is zero here also zero here also zero here also zero we know that this is called as cross arm that is called as what ma cross arm and uh, this equipment is called as overhead line insulation we already studied these things we already studied overhead line insulation is made up of uh, porcelain golden days nowadays it is made up of with a uh, steatite and this is uh, our transmission line uh, transmission line we know very well transmission line is made up of uh, acsr conductor and it is a standard conductor standard conductor it is not solid we had already discussed these things now this is also called as power conductor transmission line is also called as power conductor so this is the one which is carrying power yes this is the one which is carrying power from one place to another place or from one tower to another tower or one node to another node or one bus to another bus so just uh, these are the physical things what we are observing on a transmission system yes let's go for the circuit development if you observe here we had taken here three phases but in the previous uh, example we had taken only one phase uh, for the purpose of a simple city phase a and phase b phase c three transmission lines three phases in fact not three transmission lines three phases we taken but here we taken only one phase one conductor we taken yeah observe here let us connect with a source or a generator at the sending inside yeah we are connecting a generator at the sending inside let's connect we are taking a generator here observe this is phase a b a this is phase b b b this is phase c b c plus minus v a reference pillar please ma minus plus this is v b this is minus plus this is a v c reference pillar please alternating voltages we are dealing with the ac transmission system therefore we need to take uh, alternating uh, voltages you might be thinking sir why we taken only a star connected generator why not a delta connected generator remember one point the generator always must be star connected 
the reason for this one we are going to understand in fault analysis please do please do remember this point we will be understanding the reason in fault analysis this point where all three wires are meeting all three phase wires are meeting that point is called as neutral connecting the neutral to the ground is called as neutral grounding the method of connecting neutral to the ground is called as neutral grounding we have various methods of neutral grounding means if we place a resistance from this neutral to ground that is called as resistance grounding if we are placing a coil or reactor from neutral to ground that is called as reactance grounding if we are placing a wire whose resistance is zero then the grounding is called as a solid grounding or as a q grounding then we need to connect the load also we need to connect the load also let's connect the load now this side let's connect the load we take an star connected generator the reason we'll be knowing in fault analysis but load may be of any type you can, you can take that may be either star or delta either star or delta let us take delta connected load delta connected load yeah this is the load load may be an impedance or a motor it may be anything but it is a three phase load it is a three phase load this is load yes this is generator yes this is generator a three phase star connected generator observe if we mark uh, this is uh, source this is load the connecting wires which are present between source and load are called as transmission lines yes these are transmission lines this is phase a phase b and phase c now here a very good question that rises uh, or this question has been asked in many a times in interview also that question is what is the configuration of transmission line means uh, transmission line configuration is star or delta the answer is uh, transmission line is not going to have any type of configuration why because star delta configurations are valid only for electrical machines and loads but not for transmission lines transmission line is neither star nor delta please do remember this point a very good point number of times this question has been asked in interviews but many faculties also will teach that transmission line is star configuration you just see this is star connected generator this is delta connected load our transmission line is present between one star source and one delta load the configuration of the transmission line cannot be decided first of all the question itself is wrong there is no star delta configuration for transmission line it is not mandatory that everything is going to have either star or delta connection here transmission line is neither star nor delta then the next question that rises in student mind is sir a 220 kv transmission line he mentioned three phase transmission line that 220 kv is line voltage or phase voltage suppose if it is line voltage what is the phase voltage means how to get the relationship between voltages and the currents of a three phase transmission line is the next question we know the relationship for star connection that is v line to line is equal to root d times of v phase magnitude and uh, uh, i line is i line is equal to i phase for star connection for delta connection we know v line to line is equal to v phase and i line to line is equal to root d times of uh, i phase for delta connection but for star as i am saying neither it is star nor delta then how to establish the relationship between voltages and currents for that uh, let's uh, find the phase and line voltages uh, i am taking a reference reference means uh, any place that is with a uh, zero volts yes this is the reference or zero volts means uh, need not to be always ground any point that is available to you on a plane where you are finding zero volts that is taken as a reference the voltage that is measured from phase a yes the voltage that is measured from phase a to reference is called as va or it is also called as v phase the voltage that is measured from phase b to reference is called as vb phase b voltage yes the voltage that is measured from phase c to the neutral or reference is called as vc yes vc these are the phase voltages the voltage that is measured between phase a and phase b is called as vab between b and c is called as vbc between c and a is called as vca let us find the relationship between phase voltages and line voltages for that we are taking balanced system of voltages then a question might rise in your mind so what is the balanced system of voltages let us understand balanced system of voltages yes balanced system of voltages balanced system of voltages let us take three phase voltages and learn the condition when the system is said to be balanced or voltages are said to be balanced 
I'm writing the voltages here absorptively. This is phase A that is equal to Vm sine omega of T plus theta. This theta may be any angle, maybe zero, maybe positive, maybe negative, it may be any angle. Vb is equal to Vm sine omega t plus theta minus 120 degrees. Vc is equal to Vm sine omega t plus theta minus 240 degrees. These are the three voltages. When these voltages are set to be balanced, in fact, let's take this one as Vma, this one as Vma, Vmb and Vmc. This is omega A, omega B and omega C. Let's take that. Now, when the set, these system of voltages are set to be balanced, the first condition is Vma must be equal to Vmb must be equal to Vmc. Yes, the maximum magnitudes of all three phase voltages must be exactly equal. And the second condition that is referred to satisfy is the operating frequency of phase A, phase B and phase C must be exactly equal. That is omega A is equal to omega B is equal to omega C second condition. Third very important condition. I does not mean to say that these are unimportant. It is very important here to understand. Yeah, these two can be easily understood. Let's take some time to understand. The angle difference between one phase to another phase must be 120. Yes, sir. What is the angle here theta minus 120? What is the angle here theta? If you take the difference here, we will be left with a 120. From here to here also, it should be 120. From here to here also, it should be 120. It means A to B, B to C, C to A. The angle should be 120. Here, minus 240 can also be written as plus 120. Minus 240 can be also written as a plus a 120. Third condition is this one. It means uh, the angle difference between one phase to another phase must be 120 degrees. These are the three conditions, those are to be definitely satisfied to say the system of the voltage has balanced. Now, if these conditions are satisfied, the result what I'm going to get is the note point I'm taking over here. That is, if a system of voltage is balanced, then Va plus Vb system of voltages is balanced. Voltages is balanced, then then Va plus Vb plus Vc equal to 0 at any instant means at any instant you can take at omega t equal to 120 at omega equal to omega t equal to 30 40 wherever you take this is going to be satisfied summation must be equal to 0. Here there is a big misunderstanding between uh, the concepts that is this is the result means if the system of voltage is balanced then this condition will satisfy but uh, satisfaction of this one is not sufficient to make the system of voltage uh, balanced. Let us understand in more brief way. That is, if the system of voltages are balanced, then definitely this will satisfy. But uh, if this satisfies alone without uh, satisfying all these three, means in these three, any one is failed, any one is failed, that is pakka unbalanced. Whether this is satisfying or not, that is not a matter. Why? Because this is not the condition, this is a result. Means uh, in these three conditions, condition one, two, three, if any condition is failed, I can say that those system of voltages are unbalanced. This is not a matter for me. If these three are satisfied, then definitely this will satisfy. Many people will remember only this one. They will forget these three and they will commit mistake. Therefore, clearly, please do remember this one. This is not a condition. This is the result. The important conditions to satisfy balanced system is these three, please. This same is exactly equally applicable for uh, currents also, please. Means uh, you can uh, you can say all maximum magnitudes of the currents must be equal. All frequencies must be equal and angles differ by 120 degrees. It is equally applicable for currents. Let's go for the development of relationship between line voltage and phase voltages of a transmission line. Line current and phase current of a transmission line. Yeah. Let's take the diagram. What we previously taken transmission line diagram. This is phase A. Ma. This is phase A. Yes. Let's take here phase B. This is phase B. Yes. Let's take phase C also. Ma. This is phase C. I am connecting this I uh, star connected generator. Yes, this is the generator star connected generator. I am connecting this side. Yes, or it is also called as source. Source. Yes. Now, this generator neutral we are connecting to the ground. The process of connecting neutral to the ground is called as neutral grounding. This is zero volts. This is the generator. 
here I'm connecting load. I'm connecting a delta connected load. Yes, I'm connecting a delta connected load here. Yes, delta connected load is A to A, B to B, and C to C. We are connecting. This is load. Now, the configuration of transmission line is what? Uh, this the configuration of transmission line is neither star nor delta. Transmission line is not having any configuration. This side if we have a star connected generator. This side we have a delta connected load. There is no configuration for transmission line. Let's get the relationship between the voltages and currents of a transmission line. But before that, for delta connection, for delta connection, yes, magnitude of line to line voltage is equal to magnitude of phase voltage and magnitude of line current is equal to root three times of phase current. This is for delta connection. Let's go for star connection. For star connection, for star connection, yes, what are the relationships we have? Magnitude of line to line voltage is equal to two three times of uh, phase voltage, yes, and I line is equal to I phase for star connection. Then what is the relationship between voltages and currents of a transmission line? Sir, why not any one of these two? Because transmission line is neither star nor delta. We already discussed uh, configuration, means star delta configurations are valid only for electrical machines and loads, but not for transmission line. Let's understand here. The voltage from the voltage from yeah any phase to ground any phase to ground is called as what voltage ma is called as phase voltage yes this is called as a uh, phase voltage b vb with respect to reference amplitude here need not to take always uh, ground as reference any point whose potential at zero volts is taken as a reference that is also called as a hypothetical neutral means uh, the point where the potential is zero will will be taking as a hypothetical neutral or hypothetical reference or reference simply or reference yes the voltage from here to reference is called as what voltage ma? this is dc those are phase voltages any phase to the reference the reference is how much more zero volts is called as phase voltage the voltage between two phases is called as line voltage or line to line voltage yes vdc and this is VCA, VCA. The voltage between two phases is called as what voltage? Ma? Line voltage or line to line voltage. The current that is flowing in a phase is called as phase current IA. This is IB. This is a IC. What is line to line current? The name line to line current is valid only in star and delta. Yeah, let us see that also. Let us see that also. Means if I take delta connection, if I take a delta connection like this as shown in figure yeah this is the delta this i am taking as phase a yes this current is ia this current i will take as ib this current i will take as ic this is the delta connection this is uh, the outgoing terminal this is the outgoing terminal this is outgoing terminal so these things i taken as phases and these are the lines what is this current the current i am going to get here yes what is this current ic minus ia this will become what ICA, ICA, yes, ICA. What is this current? IA is coming, IB is going, therefore, IAB, this will be. What is this current? IB is uh, coming and IC is leaving. This is what ma? IPC. Here, these are the line currents, yes, these are the line currents and these are the phase currents. There is a difference between line currents and phase currents, means uh, between two lines, yeah, between two phases, in fact, this is fa or one phase, this is another phase. That difference current is flowing here, vectorial difference please, not uh, arithmetic difference. That current is flowing in this line, that's why this is called as line current. These are called as uh, phase currents, means in delta, there is uh, a difference between line current and phase current. Whereas, if you come to transmission lines, this is phase A, this is phase B. Between two lines, does any current will exist? Yes sir, some current will exist. What is that current? Charging current due to the capacitance effect. Yes, charging current or displacement current is called as, it is not conduction current. If we neglect that capacitance effect and if we neglect leakage current that is flowing, what is the current that is existing between two phases? That is a zero. Zero amperes is going to flow between two phases. If a conducting current is flowing between two phases, what will happen? Ma? A dead short circuit. What is it called as? It is called as line to line fault. Suppose if these between these two there is a conduction current, between these two phases there is a conduction current, then what happens? A dead short circuit will happen. That is called as line to line fault. Line, that is called as line to line fault. Yes. So there is no meaning for 
line to line current in transmission lines. So here the point I want to discuss here is the point what I'm going to discuss here is line current is equal to for a transmission line. Yes, for a transmission line, I line is equal to I phase. Why? Because line and phase are both are same here for a transmission line. There is a difference between line current and phase current of only delta connection. That is I line is equal to root times of I phase. Even for star connection also, if you take star connection, this is star connection. This itself is line, this itself is phase. Therefore, line to line current and phase current both are exactly same even for star connection. But only delta connection is having the difference that is line current and phase current. Line current is equal to root times of phase current. These are the relationship between currents of a transmission line. Let us find the relationship between voltages. Really means here, come here, come to the previous diagram. Here, I want to find VAB. What is VAB? Now, if I keep a voltmeter here, I am going to get VAB. What that voltmeter will read exactly? That voltmeter is going to read. Yeah, let us do here. VAB is equal to what is that? My VA minus VB. How to find potential? Suppose here it is 30 degrees, here it is 10 degrees. What is the voltage between these two? 20. Yes, this is 20 volts. This is uh, 10 volts. Uh, what is the difference between these two? 10 volts, please. Suppose if this is 100 volts, this is 10 volts. What is the difference between these two? 90 volts. Yes or not? So, the voltage between two points can be measured by taking the difference of that point and this point. VAB is equal to VA minus VB. Let us draw the phasor diagram. Let us draw the phasor diagram. Now, if you observe carefully, this is phase A. Yes, this is phase A. VA I call. This is phase B. VA, VB I call. This is phase C. VC I call. Yes. Now, let us find the line voltage. Means, uh, how to find the line voltage? Uh, means, I want to find VAB. Yes, VAB is equal to what? VA minus uh, VB. We know the angles. What are the angles? Angles are this is 120 ma, this is 120 ma, and this is also 120. Yes, VAB is equal to VA minus of uh, VB. Minus VB means uh, this one, minus VB means uh, this one. The resultant of these two, yes, is called as VAB. Yes, this is called as VAB from parallel loss factors. Now, I want to find the VAB magnitude. Anyhow, we know this angle is 60 degrees. Yes, this angle is 60 degrees and this angle is 30 degrees. We know very well. VAB magnitude I want to find. So, VAB magnitude is equal to root of this magnitude square. What is the magnitude of this magnitude square? VB magnitude square, VM square plus magnitude of this one. Yes, VM square plus 2 into only magnitude we are considering 2 Vm into Vm into cos of angle. What is the angle we have between these two vectors we are taking 60 degrees. Yes, between Va and minus Vb the angle difference we have is 60 degrees. That is Vab is equal to root of Vm square plus Vm square plus 2 Vm square into cos 60. How much is cos 60? No, 1 by 2. Gone. That is Vab magnitude is equal to root 3 times of Vm. Means uh, if we observe carefully, VAB maximum magnitude is, yes, root 3 times of maximum magnitude of phase A or root 3 times of maximum magnitude of phase B. From this one, what I can write is VAB magnitude is equal to root 3 times of V phase magnitude, either phase A or phase B. Why? Because we are taking phase A magnitude, phase B magnitude, maximum magnitude I am talking about. Phase C magnitude are, all are exactly equal. Now, for transmission line, what is the relationship we got? For transmission line, we got V line to line is equal to root 3 times of I phase. Yes, I line to line is equal to I phase. These relationships are exactly same as that of star connection, but it does not mean to say that transmission line is connected in star. I told you number of times, star delta configurations are valid only for electrical machine windings and uh, loads. Means uh, here for transmission line, the relationships are same as that of a star connection. An interview question asked me many a times in interviews and many a times in examination, students got confused about the, this one. Yeah, before I enter into the further topics, uh, let's take one example. Let's take one example and understand. The example is uh, a 220 kV, a 220 kV, comma 500 MVA transmission line you mentioned 500 MVA transmission line further question I am not writing because this itself is enough for me to analyze further yeah 
what we need to understand from this one sir what we need to understand the first question what i am asking is uh, the given 220 kv what all that is mentioned here that voltage is sending in voltage or receiving in voltage yes 220 kv is sending end voltage or receiving end voltage yes in these two which is correct always the given voltage is what ma receiving end voltage please do remember yes the mentioned voltage in the given data of a transmission line is always receiving end voltage you might got one doubt sir why not it is sending end voltage why only the examiner will mention receiving end voltage yeah very clearly we are going to understand number of times in mp also this question has been asked remember here the answer is like this sir we know what voltage we want at the receiving end suppose at receiving end i want 220 kv at receiving i want 220 kv sending end voltage is equal to what my receiving end voltage plus voltage drop in the transmission line yes I means suppose if voltage drop is equal to 10 or 10 kv this is how much my 220 kv how much i need to send from sending end to 230 kv yes it is my responsibility being an engineer who is setting it who is sitting at generating station yes i need to generate this much uh, voltage and i need to send that much from sending inside or if this is changed from 220 kv to yes that is changed from 220 kv to 100 kv and the drop is changed as load changes to suppose say some 5 kv how much i need to send from sending inside 105 kv if you observe carefully which one is changing according to our requirement so first of all who is important here the consumer is important consumer load required 100 kv we need to provide being an engineer who is operating at generating station it's my responsibility to provide the requirements of uh, uh, customers now customer require 100 kv but customer don't know about all voltage drop and all these things i will please all these things are nonsense therefore customer need 100 kv i need to provide him i need to calculate the voltage drop that is taking place in the transmission line and that uh, extra added amount uh, along with the consumer requirement i need to send from sending inside means uh, which one depends on which one means which one is dependent which one is independent receiving end is independent yeah please do not misunderstand some people will misunderstand like this sir how you are saying receiving end is independent sending end is giving receiving end is taking yeah i to accept with that sending end has to give receiving end has to take but how much receiving end see how much sending end should send depends on receiving end yeah again i am repeating the statement how much sending end should send depends on receiving end means vs is a function of uh, vr vs is a function of vr yeah there is further explanation that will be taken later but here i am talking about the relation between only vs and vr sending end voltage depends on receiving end voltage but receiving end voltage does not depend on sending end voltage why because receiving end consumer is there it's our responsibility to send the voltage what that is required by the consumer okay that's why always the receiving end voltage is mentioned in the given data yes after that one more question is second question that 220 kv is line voltage or phase voltage line voltage or phase voltage yes before we going to this that question let us understand this question first before we answer that question let us understand he said just simply a transmission line he didn't mention whether it is three phase or single phase yes he did not mention whether it is three phase or single phase the given transmission line is the given transmission line is three phase or single phase why because he did not mention suppose if he mentions clearly a three phase transmission line no issues we need not to ask this question if he mentions uh, the given transmission line single phase transmission line no need to ask this question but he did not mention anything what we need to consider always we need to feel the given question as or the given data belongs to three phase or why not it is single phase if it is a single phase transmission line examiner will clearly mention a single phase transmission system means uh, this will be mentioned if it is this will be mentioned but if it is three phase it will not be mentioned therefore the given transmission line always we take it as three phase transmission line then we go to this question this question is 220 kv line voltage 220 kv is line voltage or phase voltage yeah in the question what we taken here a 220 kv yes that's it he mentioned he did not mention it as line or phase voltage tell me that voltage is line voltage or phase voltage by default always the given voltage is a line voltage it is never going to be phase voltage it is never going to be phase voltage but because 
if you observe he mentioned a transmission line that's it means that is what three phase he will not mention in the examination if it is three phase or three phase but if it is single phase he will clearly mention it as a single phase so understanding the given data is very important before we solve a problem now the th fourth question is this is the fourth question anyhow uh, if you want phase voltage v phase is equal to 220 by root 3 kv we all know very well why because for a transmission line line voltage is root 3 times of a phase voltage and uh, line current is exactly equal to phase current first of all there is no difference between line current and phase current here for voltage between two lines you can measure between a line and difference you can measure but if you measure the current between two phases so nothing we are having what you have air air is an insulator how much is the current that is flowing zero conduction current is exactly zero please now the next question is uh, this 220 kv is this 220 kv is uh, rms value or peak value or average value average value a very important question all these questions are very important in understanding the given data so this 220 kv is rms value or peak value or average value always the mentioned voltage is rms not peak not average if it is peak you will mention as peak value if it is average you will mention as a average value let's uh, take all the points at a time let's take all the points at a time so the given voltage very important note point ma very important note point the, the mentioned voltage the mentioned voltage in the data in the data of a transmission line of a transmission line is always is always yes receiving end receiving end line to line rms value rms value yes so first of all it is the receiving end voltage sir is it possible sometimes to mention sending end voltage yes he will mention but he will clearly mention there sending end voltage the term will be given but if it is receiving end voltage the term will be absent sir the given transmission line may be single phase yeah if it is single phase the examiner will clearly mention it as a single phase transmission line if not mentioned anything then by default it is three phase transmission line sir sometimes is it possible to mention a uh, peak peak voltage yes he may mention but he will mention that word peak if not always always we will take that what rms value so this is how we need to understand the given data and one more thing i mentioned over there that is 500 mva observe 500 mva this 500 mva is three phase power or single phase power it is pakka three phase power this is the power belongs to all three phases uh, if it is a balancing system then per phase power will be by 3 per phase power will be by 3 yes or no yes sir. so the given transmission line is always a three phase transmission line if we understand given data in a proper manner then only we are going to answer the question imagine a 220 kv what that is given by him if you take it as sending in voltage gone total answer is gone and the answer what you got wrongly will be there definitely in the given options uh, you are going to get me to marking that's why before we solve any problem first of all it is required to understand the given data till now we are done with uh, what you called a transmission line and uh, before transmission line we connected a three phase generator balanced source i told balanced generator we connected the relationship between balanced voltage means uh, balanced voltage when those are called as uh, balanced balanced currents we see we need to see the balanced loads or when the loads are said to be balanced when the question is here when loads are said to be balanced when loads are said to be balanced we saw when voltage are said to be balanced when currents are said to be balanced when loads are said to be balanced yes once we understand this one yes uh, total analysis is going to be easy right? because number of times i am going to mention balanced and unbalanced balanced and unbalanced in fact in fault analysis uh, we have a chapter called before fault analysis itself you are going to see that called as symmetrical components whenever a system of voltages or currents is unbalanced we are going to resolve that unbalanced system of uh, voltages or currents into two sets of balanced and one set of uh, cofaxial components called as positive sequence negative sequence and zero sequence components why we are going to that also we are going to study so but that's why first of all understanding first of all what is balanced system of voltages balanced system of currents and loads is very important suppose if i'm taking impedance load za is a uh, impedance of phase a zb is a uh, impedance of phase b zc is impedance of phase c za magnitude is mod za and its angle is theta a 
Zb magnitude is mod Zb and its angle is theta b, and Zc magnitude is mod Zc and its angle is theta c. If mod Za is exactly equal to mod Zb is exactly equal to mod Zc and and this not or and theta a equal to theta b equal to theta c, then this system of a load is said to be balanced. This system of load is said to be balanced. We are done with the generator voltage. Generator means voltage. This generator means voltage currents. The relationship of currents is also exactly the same as a voltage please. This is the relationship for balanced impulse load. Balanced impulse load. So with this, we are done with the balanced system of voltages, balanced system of currents, and balanced system of loads. In the next module, we are going to talk about the the resistance, inductance, and capacitance of a transmission line. Not completely, just we are going to see how a transmission line possessing a resistance, how a transmission line is going to have inductance, how a transmission line is going to have capacitance. Those are uh, uh, by default values or the values what we are connecting, how those are formed, those are lumped or distributed, what not many things we are going to see. After completion of the second module, in the third module, we are going to understand. Uh, the complete description how to find resistance, how to find inductance, inductance formula, importance, whatnot, everything we are going to see. In the next module, we are going to see about uh, the resistance and inductance and capacitance formations in the transmission line. All the best, ma. Thank you.